Good on you for tuning in. This video is for anyone who is planning a trip to Ecuador or maybe somebody who has already booked a trip to Ecuador in the coming weeks. Right now, of course, there is a national state of emergency in this country. Hopefully, if you've been doing some research, the YouTube algorithm, Zubede, I said that for you, hopefully the YouTube algorithm will put this video in front of you so you can see what it's like to travel around Ecuador right now using public transport. On Monday, January 15th, just a week after the state of emergency was declared, I had to catch a bus from Loja all the way down to the coast, in the city of Salinas. Now, of course, that's not just one bus. Uh, it's three buses, and as a rule, I don't travel on buses at night. So it was a two-day journey. First leg of the journey was from Loja to Cuenca, which was just under five hours. Then I immediately got on another bus from Cuenca to Guayaquil. The traffic was horrible, so that took four hours. And I had organized an Airbnb to stay at in Guayaquil for the night. So... I stayed in Guayaquil, got up early the next day, got on another bus to Santa Elena, and uh, from the uh, bus terminal at Santa Elena, you catch a taxi the rest of the way into Salinas. Here in the Loja bus terminal, things were pretty relaxed. Loja is quite removed from most of the trouble, so it only took a couple of days for Loja to return to normal. For me, I really noticed a difference once I got to the Cuenca bus terminal. Every access point had a security guard with a metal detector wand and they were checking everybody's backpacks. This then continued uh, at the point where you got on the bus. They would wave you down with the wand again, they would give you a physical pat down and they were forcing absolutely everybody to put their backpacks in the cargo bay underneath the bus. Now normally, that's a hard no for me. Normally, um, if you put your backpack under there, that, that really increases the chances of you getting it stolen. So I was obviously hesitant when I saw this happening, but I am happy to report that they were taking this very seriously. And uh, the bus company I rode on was using um, sticky, um, you know, numbered tickets that they would tear in half. So they would stick one half of the ticket on your bag and then you got the other half. And uh, this was all being managed by the bus driver. So I did. I put my bag under the bus with everybody else and got on the bus. I felt naked. <laughs> it feels weird to be on the bus here in Ecuador without your backpack. So we've made it to Guayaquil. If you watch my other video, you'll know that the Guayaquil bus terminal is absolutely massive. It looks like an airport. And to get off the bus and into the terminal, there was more security. So they were waving you down with the metal detector wand, patting you down and checking your backpack that you just got out of the, uh, the bus cargo hold. So, um, they're doing that to everybody before you even got back inside the bus terminal off the bus, right? So lots of security. Walking around in the uh, Guayaquil terminal, there was a massive police presence. There were police everywhere. So as you can see in this video, there were a lot of people in the Guayaquil bus terminal. There's a lot of people everywhere. Guayaquil is a huge city. It has a terrible reputation for being extremely dangerous and right now a lot of the trouble that is happening in Ecuador is happening in Guayaquil. However, when you're in a place like the bus terminal with thousands of other people, you start to feel a sense of safety in numbers. And that continues um, outside. You go outside and there are hundreds of taxis and people just swarming everywhere. So I felt quite at ease getting in the taxi and going to my Airbnb. 
just the sheer number of people out and about just going about their regular lives tends to make you feel pretty safe, you know? I mean, the chances of something happening to you are very, very slim, I would say. Now, having said that, I realize I'm a gringo and I can be a target, but if you're street smart and you're always, you know, aware of your surroundings, um, during the daytime in a place like that full of people, I don't know, I think you're gonna be okay. Now, I didn't get into Waikil till about four o'clock in the afternoon. I was pretty hungry, so I went straight to my Airbnb and then I went and got something to eat. I didn't go into downtown Waikil like I did on the previous trip. Have you seen that video? I had an amazing time. I'll put the link um, below. So I, I didn't have time to do that. I was in a, uh, an Airbnb in a safe part of town near the Malacon, um, which is like a touristy area that, and it, it was crawling with security guards. So it was really no problem. I had a nice meal at a, at a fun restaurant and I walked home in the dark. <laughs> it was absolutely no problem because I was in a safe part of town. Here's, uh, here's some advice for you. When you are buying a bus ticket, they will just cram everyone together at the front of the bus. So if, if the bus is only half full, every single one of those people will be sitting next to each other in the front half of the bus. I don't know why they do that, that's just what they do. So I have learned that if you want some space to yourself, you ask them to be down the back of the bus near the bathroom. They will look at you funny and think you're weird, something's wrong with you, um, <laughs> but they'll do it. And if you do that, you have the whole bus to yourself. It's fantastic. I learned this the hard way a couple of times. I just let them assign me a seat and I ended up at the front of the bus in the crowd with everyone else. And of course, here people don't have any sense of personal space whatsoever. So um, the, the final straw for me was one time this guy uh, unpacked everything everything just everything out of his backpack he had a, a blanket on him um just junk everywhere and of course he had the armrest and there was stuff overflowing into my seat and you know stuff touching me and then uh he pulled out his phone and started watching videos loudly with no headphones which is another very common situation here on buses everybody just watches videos with no headphones loudly so uh, once the bus started moving and I realized there was a whole bunch of empty seats down the back of the bus, I asked this guy, you know, hey, sorry, man, I need to get up. I'm going to move. And he looked at me like I was a crazy person and the most annoying person in the world because it was quite a process for him to slowly gather all his stuff <laughs> <laughs> you know, take his blanket off and eventually stand up. There was a lot of huffing and puffing and sighing and, you know, sideways glances. And <laughs> it was ridiculous. So I learned my lesson. Um, just ask the person at the ticket counter to put you down the back of the bus near the bathroom and you'll have many, many seats to yourself. The bus from Waikil to Santa Elena was actually an absolute nightmare um, not because of any trouble or cartel uh, but because the driver was an absolute lunatic and this guy was a fucking wanker he was driving so fast and so dangerously he was passing other buses and trucks like they were standing still uh, it was a two-lane highway and this guy was you know switching lanes like a race driver I was absolutely terrified. Um, in fact, I'm, I'm sure this guy's going to crash. So if anyone from the bus company is watching this, it was the 9 a.m. bus from Waikil to Santa Elena on uh, Tuesday, the Tuesday the 16th. Whoever that driver is, he needs to calm the fuck down or he's going to kill somebody. So that sucked. We did make it, though. And uh, once we got off the bus, we were um, escorted into the uh, Santa Elena bus terminal and uh, there was security everywhere. So they 
they did check our backpacks and pat us all down and all of that. But once you get into the terminal, it's pretty chill. It's a relatively small regional terminal. It's big and open and airy, as you can see here. And it's kind of got a beach vibe to it. Um, every time I've been there, there's always dogs wandering around inside. <laughs> it's pretty chill. Hi. What's up? It's okay. jump in the taxi and then it's uh, usually around six dollars from Santa Elena into the heart of Salinas. It's quite a ways. It, it's, it takes a while. It's a long taxi ride. On the ride I saw lots of police presence and military. While I was in Salinas I saw many many trucks um, military trucks or regular SUVs with uh, military personnel soldiers with machine guns in the back of these cars just driving around patrolling usually in groups of four or five um, it was a substantial military presence in Salinas I was in Salinas to look at some apartments um, if you don't know already I'm moving there I'm leaving Loja and moving to Salinas Here's the Airbnb I stayed at. Uh, this was, I, I can confidently say this was the best Airbnb I've ever stayed in, in all of Ecuador. It was just fantastic and the view is incredible. It had hot water, uh, everything worked, it was clean. Oh, it was, it was such a breath of fresh air. It's great. So I stayed in Salinas, I checked out some apartments, uh, I found what I liked. So uh, I will be moving there soon. Anyway, this, this particular night that I was there, I had a great time. I went to this pizza joint, had a fantastic experience. The woman who owns it speaks enough English that I was able to have some fun chatting with her. The pizza was great. <laughs> it was awesome. I was wandering around, um, walked up and down the beach for a bit. You know, it's, it's uh, Salinas felt like it was back to normal as well, except for the very noticeable presence of police and military. I stayed just one night in Salinas, then the next morning I uh, got back on the bus, headed to Guayaquil, then from Guayaquil went to Cuenca and I stayed the night in Cuenca this time. Cuenca of course is a beautiful city. There, There's an Airbnb that I particularly like there. Uh, it's cheap as chips, it's like $15 a night. The owners are very friendly and just look at this beautiful old building. Um, it's just gorgeous. It's right downtown. It's like two blocks away from, you know, the main historical square. Uh, I'll put a link below so you can find that Airbnb. Had a great time in Cuenca. Had, uh, had some breakfast the next day at a leisurely pace. Uh, no drama at all in Cuenca. Um, it's a very, very safe city as always. I did see a little bit more of a police presence in Cuenca. I didn't see any, um, you know, trucks driving around with uh, military in them, uh, but I did see a lot more police and security guards. Anyway, had a great time. Got back on the bus to Loja. Should you visit Ecuador now during the state of emergency? And I, and I mean, now, before March 8th, should you come to Ecuador? Here's what I think. If you are an international traveler, if you have traveled to lots of different countries around the world and experienced many different cultures, if you are street smart, if you're confident, if you know what the scams are, if you know how to act, you know how to dress, if you know enough Spanish that you sound confident, 
Like, if somebody's listening to you speak Spanish, are they going to think, oh, yeah, this, this guy knows what's up, or this gal, she's lived here for a while. You know, she clearly understands what's going on. If you can pull that off, if, if this all describes you, then you're going to be fine in Ecuador. Come to Ecuador. You're going to have a great time. You're going to be just fine. If that does not describe you, you might want to wait. You might want to wait a little bit to see what happens. I hope you found this video helpful. Give me a like. Give me a subscribe. Uh, send this to a friend. If you know somebody who's thinking about coming to Ecuador, send them my channel. Cheers. All right. We'll see you later.